And in today's episode, we'll continue talking about ways to improve the quality of your life and your work-life balance and the quality of your uh, remote workflow. What we'll be talking about specifically is a tool set made of uh, specific tools Oh, well, there are several tools, like I personally used uh, Trello and I used Slack. And uh, I believe that, well, Trello is quite simple and uh, it is based on uh, cards. It works like the card principle and it's very uh, convenient to track tasks if you move them like those cards uh, to different boards. Definitely the fans of Kanban will love it. And somebody who's used to working in uh, Jira, you know, those yeah. boards in yeah, Jira, yeah, they, awesome. you assign the task to a person and then you kind of track the progress of the task. Yeah. Pretty simple. As for Slack, uh, I know that Slack has a lot of extra functionality. It also allows uh, making calls and it has a lot of like groups for teamwork. So uh, the specter of uh, features is pretty, pretty vast. Okay, the free version has some limitations. For small teams yeah. is great. You can use it for free, absolutely. For you, if you have a big team that has, you have to share a lot of data, then there is a paid op, the, the paid version of Slack. Also, there is Microsoft Teams, which uh, seems to be like the, the, the biggest competitor of Slack. Front is um, for Teams as well. Is for yeah, it emails, be. is for sharing yeah, emails mailing. for teams mm -hmm. and customers, like to help you manage your mail for your business. Also, Flip is a sort of, an, it's an app, it can be downloaded. Well, it's pretty like a must that your web app also has a version for your phone, like for Android and for iOS, because kind of connect to your team at any time. Like even if you like went out for a second, but you get a message and you can reply if it's something urgent. Actually, I've heard that some people do use Jira. On Jira, you can kind of log your, um, you know, your task progress mm -hmm. and write yes. it from like, I don't know, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. I was doing this and from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. I was doing this, you know, this kind of thing. And there are also time trackers that do this automatically. They just, just record everything you do on your PC and they give you this report with which programs were launched, which documents were open in these programs. like. <laughs> Because it's super valuable insight for you. If you want to know, uh, you might not be looking at it all the time, but once there's something comes up that uh, you're really interested to know how much time you spend on it, it's super valuable. Especially if it's if it's this time tracker works in the like in the background, so you don't have to turn it on and off all the time. And for me, the tool of choice was Manic Time. Mm -hmm. and uh, like a funny name but uh, I shall, I'll share the link in the description it's free and you can actually download the spreadsheet with all the information at any time so if you need to share it with your manager with your boss with your client whatever you can do that well I found this cool app called the hours tracker and uh, well it sort of does uh, similar things to the manic time you've uh, talked about uh work you can track your earnings for uh like specific amount of time you spend on uh, a task for instance if you set like the rate uh the hourly rate then it can accumulate like your earnings uh it also groups uh your uh, time and earnings by uh, day week and month so it has like periods of time um also uh you can organize some of the tasks that you've done by using tags and you can collaborate you can share so it's uh, kind of well it's kind of handy i've heard it listen i've heard about it multiple times it's called toggle um, it's pretty convenient and uh, you got to try this out as well um, and uh, there are a lot of benefits that's a little bit different from uh, those that we've talked about it's a little bit different from any time and all the kind of thing but 
uh, a tool uh, for Mac users that uh, helps you resist the urge to go on social media and you know get distracted. It's called uh, Self Control, and it's free for a Mac OS. And so what it does, it actually uh, blocks all of the websites uh, that you think will be distracting. This you. is harsh. This is yeah, really harsh. For a given period of time, so you can actually like set your work time. I mean, from for instance, I don't know. 8 uh, a.m. to, I don't know, 6 p.m., whatever. And so uh, it blocks all of these websites for a given period of time, and you cannot enter them. Two other uh, apps. Uh, the first one is It's a Cal. Uh, it's, uh, well, it integrates your calendar and uh, reminders, and you can modify, uh, like, uh, the notifications. So it kind of uh, reminds you of the important stuff that you can keep forgetting about. So it's like a small app um, that's integrated um, into your uh, like uh, operating system. And so the other one is freemium. It's called Bear, but for some reason it's listed all over the internet as one of the best productivity tools for Mac users. And so uh, it's like a flexible note-taking app that uh, works similarly to Evernote, I believe, and it also allows you saving all of these uh, uh, bits of information that you collect while you're web browsing or you know, working and uh, just keeping it uh, all in one place. One other thing I wanted to mention, another tool that I've found really, really really awesome that I liked. Uh, so, but the app is called Notion and maybe you've heard of it. A ton of people on the on YouTube have been talking about it. Like, really. Yeah, I've heard of it as well, but never use it. Yeah, but a lot of people have been talking about it and are really excited about it. Or maybe just very, very clever influencer marketing. I don't know. But uh, it definitely worked for me and I tried it and so this one, the, the Notion app was actually perfect. So I could stack everything in there, all my guitar tabs, all my uh, content uh, plan ideas, all all this stuff like a to-do list, and you can also can share it. So it can be shared between different team members. So you all can access the same document. It's like an advanced <laughs> version of Google Docs merged with Google Keep and. Uh, you can embed images and super convenient, super fast, and it's web-based. It can be downloaded as a uh, client, like as an app on your uh, machine, like Windows or Mac. And it's also can be downloaded as an app on your phone. I mentioned Google Keep while we were preparing uh, the uh, the notes for uh, for this talk. If you're logged in in your Google account, all the notes, uh, they, they just simply sync automatically and you can access all the same notes from uh, different devices. Like if you're on your PC, on your laptop, on your phone, it's all in the same place. And it's in the format of cards. So if you mm -hmm. remember Pinterest, it looks, so your uh, board will look pretty much like Pinterest uh, after a while, if you've been using Google Keep for a while. And been pretty comfortable for me. You can store images, links, uh, to-do lists, all sorts of stuff. You can categorize things. You can put tags on the specific cards. So pretty convenient app that was not like a separate um, standalone app, but rather a Chrome extension. What is that? Uh, well, it's called Papier. I believe it's pronounced like this. And uh, it's uh, some sort of a um notepad that's integrated into a web browser so you can actually um, use some formatting even it has like some mm. basic formatting like bold and italic uh, you can save links there and uh, different textual information that uh, you can find online and so it's handy because it's integrated in your uh, chrome browser and you can just switch to this browser window that appear is and just save whatever you need there um, I know everybody is aware with Figma, everybody is aware what it is, how it works, uh, but are there other alternatives to Figma? Maybe if you, as a designer, you've been working uh, with Sketch or with Adobe XD, are there ways to kind of transition to sort of web-based uh, cloud workflow or something like that? 
all of these uh, apps, like almost all of these apps that you've mentioned are actually on subscription, like right? they're subscription based, mm -hmm. most of them uh, for bigger teams. Uh, so they have this option of collaboration within the teams, but uh, Figma is free. Envision app actually has one active uh, prototype uh, for free, so you can have a free sign up if you're working on one active project and share it with somebody. But the, like their free uh, functionality is limited. Um, Adobe XD uh, is uh, free. It has like two mm -hmm. gigabytes of the cloud storage, so we can actually use it uh, somewhat uh, similarly to the Google Docs. Um, and uh, as for the Photoshop analogs that I found, these are quite similar. And I know that you've used uh, PhotoP uh, yeah, for so one I of did. our tutorials yeah, yeah. Like, previously. And there's also a Pixlr, uh, which is very similar to Photoshop. And so these are basically the web-based uh, tools that designers can use if they don't have a Photoshop subscription. So there are a num number of other things that do that. Like, uh, what's that called? Uh, Canva. Uh, they don't give you many options. That many options as they're available in uh, Photoshop. Uh, but luckily, there, there are these uh, tools. That they're online. They're completely free. You can use all the functionality for free. Of course, uh, given that it's a web-based app. Sometimes it might be pretty laggy and while opening large documents, you know, mm -hmm. things might crash. So just be prepared for that. But if you just need to cut out, like make a rectangular photo circular, then it's the perfect app for that, for sure. Okay, stop promoting Canva. We actually have Instagram stories in our marketplace. Let's better yep. promote that. So what do we have okay. on our marketplace? Uh, well, we have lots of uh, cool stuff like prototypes, illustrations, even uh, After Effects uh, videos and what are templates. Mm. But you're familiar with those better than me, for sure. Um, so yeah, we have lots of great. So uh, yeah, we do. Resources. We do. Well, Google Drive with, with its 15 gigabytes of uh, oh, file yeah. storage is uh, free course, for free for free yeah, file storage. Absolutely for free. It's like a lifesaver. Um, well, Dropbox has, uh, I guess, how, how much? Like two or. But there's also this app called Send Anywhere, uh, which actually doesn't really like need uh, a sign up. So you can just upload your files and mm -hmm. send the key to retrieve uh, this file like for um, your oh. client or your co-worker so that that makes it a lot easier yeah it actually to... uh, if I'm not mistaken it allows you to encrypt or sort of like password protect your files yeah. so and uh, of course uh, while well, sharing files and if you are sharing or storing some of your files and these files uh, well you actually do care about the privacy of these files and the security of these files. You better check everything about this provider that you are switching to, everything about this file sharing service. And if it's super important to you, sometimes it's a lot better and a lot uh, better, a lot more. Okay, it's a lot better decision if you pay for the service uh, because it kind of gives you this extra level of security and extra level of um, safety even if for example if the service closes down if it's free they don't owe you anything we constantly need to share files back and forth with our teammates with our clients and what we got to do is just just send them the file and forget about it they just we send the file, they grab the file, and we don't really need this file hanging there in the storage. Um, so for these type of tasks, there are, uh, there are services like WeTransfer that I've used. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's super quick. You don't need to sign up. You just drop the file in there. What is oh, that? Box. Uh, it's like an app for team collaboration. And so uh, uh, it allows you to secure your files. Anyways, uh, this is pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. I'm pretty sure that you have a lot of lot more tools and a lot more services, websites and apps to suggest. And if you have, 
If you do have any uh, any recommendations, yeah. feel free to leave them in the comment section. We'll be happy to check them out and uh, well, just let let us know if you have any other ideas. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for thanks for joining us and see you soon.